time. We got to exchange knowledge with um, our relatives down in the Amazon. They're going through their 500 years of uh, genocide too, so we're telling them about what's going on up here to us, and it looks like the same thing that's happening to us is happening to them too. So I'm very honored to meet them. Um, we'll go to the next slide. Oh, just a clicker. Okay. <laughs> 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 so here's my four. <laughs> this is the four generations of my family on the maternal side. This is my daughter Eva, and um, I was never in the child welfare system, but she was and still is. And um, she has her own lawyer. She could do whatever she wants. I'm not going to control her or tell her what to do, like how my mom and grandma did to me. You know, so she has that power to do what she wants. And there's me. I was in the, in the game there still. And my mom, she's from Garden River. Her dad, Phil Lestage, and my grandmother from Nesterville. And uh, I'm from Garden River First Nation. And that's a little bit, uh, next slide. I love this, this is Indian Land Bridge, and Sault Ste. Marie and Garden has been like disconnected from me at a young age since you know, my family was into um, lots of alcohol, and then just the next generation, lots of drugs came, the crystal meth and crack and other opioids and stuff, and you could see throughout the generations how it changed and went to harder, harder, harder drugs, and now we're up until the point with uh, fentanyl and car fentanyl and stuff like that. Uh, next slide. So I'm from the zoo, we call it. <laughs> and I, I, I ran over every inch of this city when I was a kid growing up there. You know, we, I get sexually assaulted at a young age in the Dixon Hotel up there where guys would chase us and try to kidnap us because we lived down in Jamestown by the International Bridge. And, uh, that was scary growing up, or even just swimming in uh, Garden River at, at uh, the beach there, and boats would come up to us on the water, and we'd be playing on their boats, and one of the aunties would always come, get the F out of there, and we'd dive off the boat and come back to shore, and that really scared the shit out of them, and it's still happening to the kids down there, you see them, but to drive through the reserves during the day, you see them ripping around on four-wheelers and stuff, and I pulled them over one day when I was going through there. I was like, see all these kids, you all guys always, always stick together. Don't ever leave anyone behind. They're like, okay. <laughs> and we've, I've done all kinds of stuff there. We've roamed around the streets and the hotels and the pavilion and next slide. And um, white fish eyes and we just pack our bag, we just pack our swimming bag and our towel and we just walk out to the island every day. And the girls uh, <coughs> would get drunk where they go down to the river rock there, that old bar back in the day. And we, we knew how to survive out there. We'd fish and we'd make a little fire and warm our clothes up, dry them off, and we'd just spend the whole day out there right until it got dark. We, and uh, it's pretty fun. It was so easy to cross to the state. We'd run right over, you know, and then the Coast Guards would chase us back. Or we'd just jump off the bridge into the water and the water would just sweep us away. So it's so easy to to get stuff over, or even just hopping on one of the trains going by. Uh, next slide. So I made this. Um, so pre-contact, our, our woman had uh, respected roles, as she was the backbone of the family community and nation. Uh, spiritual foundation was core to Native police. Strong, healthy family. Uh, sorry. Children, elders, men and women, all with respective roles. Balanced growth of men and women, no pollution, environmental racism, uh, strong indigenous men that took care of their families, and no child welfare, and in contact, you know, they came with residential schools, destroyed and uh, destroyed our families. Spiritual beliefs, language and culture, denied language and culture, loss of respect for women, denied traditional lifestyle, uh, destruction of spiritual foundation, and denied our traditional roles. And European bodies focused on male dominated society through their religion and government. <coughs> and then post contact, there's uh, sex trafficking, tokenism, uh, high suicide rates, sexual abuse, and BV, the Indian Act, 
Mother Earth extraction, no connection with culture, land, or community. That was a huge one for me. Um, human, where you don't belong from nowhere, you're not welcome anywhere. Houseless, lateral violence, and then the, the future. You know, we want more clean, clean water and no pipelines. Virtual foundations to be core to Native beliefs. Children, elders, elders, men and women, all with respected roles. Just wanted to be back how it was, you know. Our, our culture didn't change. It's, it's them keep trying to change it for us. Healing lodges that aren't uh, correctional facilities. So I told the U.S. Department, Department of Justice uh, girl down when I was in New Orleans, what, she asked me what should they do. I was like, you guys need healing lodges that aren't correctional facilities and have it for survivors. And uh, make a casino so that the money will go to the survivors' healing. <laughs> <laughs> and MMIW and uh, honor our treaties. You know, that's another big one with the Robinson Hero Treaty. They have paid us. You know, I'm not, I can only imagine what I'd do with my money. I'll just go build a nice little house somewhere and I'll be okay. Um, next slide. It's been, uh, what, 170 years? That's the old residential school in uh, Spanish. And next slide. And that's how it looked. I uh, took that picture. I visited, I, I like to visit the uh, residential school locations and I couldn't stop feeling energy around the um, incinerator there. You could see the furnace and I could just imagine how many um, babies were bur burned in there. Uh, next slide. And this one struck home to me. You know, after I was being sexually abused as a child, I'd have to say my prayers, you know. Now you lay me down to sleep. Next slide. And uh, this speaks volumes, you know, what happens to uh, Native Americans, and not only Native Americans, but it happens to all human beings on the planet, you know. So we, we're, we're in trouble right now. And what happens to Mother Earth, you know, human trafficking will happen. They'll prey on the women and the children. Right now, uh, Turkey and Syria and Africa is like cracking right in half. So I don't know what's gonna happen to us, but I have I have a good feeling we're safe on the North Shield up here. Next slide. And Shonis Willard, that's my grandma's cousin, and uh, he used to always try to save me, I guess, or lead me in the right way when I was a kid. He would pick me up, bring me to the sweat lodge, show 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 us how we uh, tear apart the bear and make the bear grease and they're eating the cartilage and stuff. And they tried really hard, you know, to make me do the strawberry fast and pick up the native culture and stuff like that, but I wasn't hearing that, you know. I had to go through my stuff to get to get where I am today to become in that, in that full circle. So next slide. Um, yeah, so historical trauma, you know, what happened to, to my grandfather and all their descendants of who they come from, you know, and uh, I can only imagine what happened to them, what they went through, you know, they don't want to tell us what happened, so I don't, I'll never know, you know, because they weren't brave enough to share, or they didn't want to, that's their choice. Mm -hmm. And then there's all kind of residential schools down in the state, that's where my family uh, came from, Drummond Island, and Squirrel, Chipmunk Island, and Sugar Island, and Gem Island, and all Lake Superior. So, what they went through, that has trickled down on me and then trickled down on my kids and my mom. And right now I'm just in the cycle of breaking that cycle, you know, stop bringing my kids around certain stuff or saying stuff. And I don't want to, I don't want to like keep them too safe because that's when we're, that's going to harm them if you keep trying to keep your kids too, too safe. And, you know, that's, that's what happened to some of my cousins and uh, I'm out there keeping them safe by not telling them anything. And, they're not alive right now. Uh, next slide. So this is uh, the, Sioux, the Sioux Jail. <laughs> That's how I sent it on the jail when I got to, uh, to, to end up be tra trafficked. I was in jail there for about four months and um, there was overcrowding, like five girls to one cell. Some girls were sleeping by the toilet and we were getting caged up there, like, and it was getting really tight in there. So. I've caused food fights and, you know, fights in jail and one time I wouldn't go in my cell so, you know, I was just being a badass in there so they kept threatening me to ship me out. 
down to kind of 10, which see next slide. So they did, you know, that guard Angie was like, oh, you know, those girls, when they go down the dumps, they never come back home. And I'm like, what? I don't know what the hell that meant. So here, me and my mom were getting shipped down there in the paddy wagon together to the Pennington. <laughs> and we're same thing down there, causing fights and fighting and in solitaire down there in the in the hole, they call it. But this time it was different. They put me my cellmate was, was a stripper and she was being trafficked and she's in the cell twerking and dancing and non-stop. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with this girl? And uh She's different, you know, like you know, us native girls, of course, we danced and drank, but I never seen twerking before ever. <laughs> <laughs> and she's really like.